In the grand theatre of life, rot is a silent, relentless force, nature's way of reclaiming what we build. For as long as we've used wood, humanity has fought this creeping decay. Rot doesn't care for our ambitions. It simply returns wood to the earth. Our ancestors faced the challenge of building lasting homes and ships without modern chemicals. A rotting beam could mean disaster, a collapsed roof, a sunken ship. This struggle shaped civilizations, forcing builders to become keen observers of nature. They learned that the fight against decay required cleverness and respect for the environment. Knowledge of wood and its enemies was passed down through generations, not in books, but in the hands of skilled carpenters and builders. Not all wood was equal. Every step from felling to construction was crucial. The battle against rot became a science of survival, allowing wood to defy decay for centuries. The secret to long-lasting wood starts with choosing the right tree. Ancient builders were expert botanists, knowing which species, oak, cedar, cypress, teak, naturally resisted rot. These trees produce chemicals in their heartwood that repel fungi and insects. Timing mattered. Trees were often felled in winter, when sap was low and less inviting to decay. Only the dense, resilient heartwood was used for exposed or structural parts. This careful selection meant even if outer layers decayed, the core remained strong. Cultures worldwide developed deep knowledge of their local woods. Vikings chose oak for ships. Japanese builders revered Hinoki cypress for temples. These choices were the result of generations of observation and trial. The foundation of any lasting structure is the quality of its timber. Material selection was the first line of defence against rot. After felling, the next step was often submerging timber in running water. This ancient practice washed out sap, sugars and starches, removing food for fungi and insects. Flowing water purified the wood, making it less prone to rot. Naval powers, like the Venetians and British season ship, timber in water for years, ensuring durability at sea. After soaking, wood was carefully air-dried, stacked to prevent warping and cracking. This patient process produced timber that was clean, stable, and strong. Water curing was a long-term investment in resilience. The result? Wood ready to withstand centuries of use. Once seasoned, wood needed a protective barrier. Builders used natural oils like linseed and tongue, which soaked deep and hardened into a waterproof shield. In Scandinavia, pine tar, thick, black and antiseptic, coated churches and ships, protecting them from harsh climates. Beeswax and tree resins sealed joints and filled cracks, while in Japan, charring cedar created a rot-resistant surface. These treatments didn't just preserve wood, they enhanced its beauty and longevity. Each culture developed unique recipes, all rooted in local resources. The goal, keep moisture out and rot at bay. These natural coatings were a testament to practical chemistry. Preservation was as much art as science. Even the best wood fails if left damp, so ancient builders designed to keep it dry. Timber structures were raised on stone foundations, separating wood from the moist earth. Steep overhanging roofs shed rain and snow, protecting walls and foundations. Wide eaves acted as umbrellas, directing water away from the building. Ventilation was key gaps under eaves, and in floors allowed air to flow, drying any moisture that crept in. These features weren't just aesthetic, they were survival strategies. 
Every design element worked to keep wood dry and healthy. The result buildings that have stood for centuries. Material, treatment and design formed a multi-layered defense. Ancient architecture was a masterclass in passive preservation. Today, ancient skills are still vital for survivalists and campers. Without modern preservatives, you must rely on nature and ingenuity. Choose durable woods like cedar or oak, or dry, standing deadwood. Avoid wood already decaying on the forest floor. Elevate shelters on rocks or logs to keep wood off damp ground. Steep roofs and layered boughs shed rain, keeping interiors dry. Pine resin can be collected and warmed to seal joints and waterproof shelters. By applying these principles, anyone can build a durable, comfortable shelter in the wild. A thousand-year-old temple is more than a building. It's a legacy of patience and ecological wisdom. Ancient builders worked with nature, not against it, creating structures that outlast modern, chemically treated wood. Their methods were slow, deliberate, and sustainable. Modern shortcuts often lead to short-lived results. True durability is built into every step from tree selection to final design. By controlling food, moisture and oxygen, they halted rot before it began. Each element, leaching, sealing, elevating, formed a robust preservation system. These techniques are not just history, they're a blueprint for sustainable building. By reviving this knowledge, we can create beauty and permanence once more. The lesson Build with wisdom, patience, and respect for nature, and your work may endure for centuries.